to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... My name is Reverend Steve. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood. At least I used to be Reverend Steve. Nowadays I go by my name Lynn. I am a trans woman living in Oklahoma. So the mere fact that I am alive for this episode, I, I think I should get a medal. Just, just being... Being trans in the Midwest can be difficult. Oh, God, yes. I, I, your boobs need to be bulletproof. Yeah. Well, they're plastic and they're very soft. So there's that, at least. I don't know if they can deflect a bullet, but they can certainly absorb one. This is episode 432 of the podcast. And, oh, oh, man, we need to talk about so much. We need to talk about politics. We need to talk about entertainment. We need to talk about World War II. And we need to talk about this week's film, the 2020 movie. I use with finger quotes because it's about the same length as uh, Dumbo, and Dumbo's hardly a movie. Yeah. Uh, the 2020 movie, Corona Zombies. And yes. It, it's a full moon pictures production, and that's all you need to know. That that says a lot right there. From the makers of Evil Bomb comes Corona Zombie. They made two sequels. We'll get to it. We'll oh, God, it. yes, I know. Yeah, we'll get to it later. Um, if, if, if you said that my life was on the line, and I would either have to watch the two sequels to Corona Zombies or be murdered. It would take me a while to make a decision. I would, based on this movie, I would have to go straight for murdered. Yeah. So, uh, fighting. Yes. This opening, this beginning, this monologue, uh, this was going to be a bit different. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to shoot out a bunch of different topics, and we're just going to talk about them and respond to them off the top of our heads, okay? Okay. Because in two weeks a lot of things have happened, so let's just let's just uh, uh, talk about some stuff. No one specific thing. Let's just talk about everything that's happening. Number one, the January 6th committee investigation. There are people online and they're saying oh man trump would go to jail as soon as uh july as soon as the end of the month and seriously does any i'm shocked that anyone thinks that that's actually a possibility i, I hope i hope that i'm wrong but it's not like america has a great track record of holding rich white guys accountable Okay, but you know, uh, again, a lot of the country puts gas into bags. What they think, okay, go ahead and think that. What difference does it make? But the fact of the matter is that the January 6th committee has already said that they are not sending Trump's case over to the Justice Department. So, no, yeah. Trump is not going to get arrested out of this. Yeah, so what's the point of it? Okay, all of this is. And I think it's a good thing, you know, don't get me wrong, but this is a show. Yeah. This is this is not actually hearings. This is a presentation of the findings of the hearings. The hearings yeah. have already happened. And everybody they feel that they want prosecuted, that's all already been shown, sent over to the Justice Department, where Merrick Garland is not doing a fucking thing about it. But yeah. Trump specifically said they are not recommend, recommending his case over to the Justice Department, even though they have more than enough evidence to do so. That is, was a literal statement by Liz Cheney. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like uh Man, I just zonked out. But yeah, there are people saying, oh man, Trump's, Trump's headed, headed to jail. jail. Trump's uh, pals are headed to jail. Trump's... And, and it's like, that's not going to happen. Trump isn't going to go to jail. 
He it, does have got some tips. Number one, save your condiments, save your save everything. Because trading things is very important where you're going. You know? You save some of your mustard, save some of your uh, mayonnaise, you can trade that for other things. And the bartering system is so important for people that are locked up. You really could make a name for yourself. Just save everything you can. Also, try and conserve toilet paper. Because toilet paper is basically like gold in there. Another thing, try and befriend the biggest guy. Once you go in there, try and befriend the biggest guy. If there are any like former Nazis, go to them first. Yeah. Good thing for Trump. Yeah, that's a good point. Find any current Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, just the biggest dude. Maybe uh, the big show is just arrested. The thing about the January 6th... Yeah, okay, okay, okay. But even if Trump were to go to jail, he's not going to that jail. Yeah, he's going to he's going to the cushy jail. He's going to... I can't believe the fucking golf course is closed on Mondays. He's going to that jail. He's going to the Goodfellas jail where people are still... Making three course, course meals. meals. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's the. That's the jail that Trump would be going to. One where you can still get prosciutto. Yes. Yeah. See, uh, there's something else I was going to say. I just came out of a really relaxing bath, and so I, I, I'm in a different. Uh, universe right now. Oh yeah. The thing about the January 6th investigation is that. They're, they're doing, doing a really, really good, good job, job explaining Trump's uh, crimes, but also, who are you trying to convince? Trump, Trump supporters? We already know, know that they don't believe in tax. Otherwise, they wouldn't be Trump supporters. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, 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 all of this seems just a bit pointless. I, I'm happy for it, and I'm happy that, that it's happening. You know, but also, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like in a way... I totally, I totally got you, because it's another performative dog and pony show. It feels but like... But like, at least we're getting the show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Nothing will come of it, but at least we're getting the show. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to another topic. Uh, Bunny, let's reboot some old action films. We touched upon this a little bit last week, but Hollywood, Hollywood will, will learn the absolute worst lesson from the tremendous success of Top Gun 2 Cruise Control. Top yes. Gun 2, The Dark World. The Top Gun 2, The Winter Soldier. Hollywood will now just be going through the 80s and 90s and finding action films and saying, hey, we'll give this a sequel slash reboot. And so I, I spent a good portion of, of, of this past week thinking of movies that Hollywood will try and crank out more of in the next uh, two to three years. And so I was okay. thinking, uh, right off the bat, The Last Starfighter. Yeah. That could do with some good, and that one, I don't know if I would even be upset about it. I like the original Last Starfighter, but it could do with some actual decent modern day special effects. I'm actually surprised they haven't done a Last Starfighter before now, you know? That's actually kind of surprising since yeah. everything. Um, I don't know who would star in it, but Bloodsport? Bloodsport, okay. Yeah. You could make like a... The way I see Bloodsport is that, you know, uh, Bloodsport, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, will continue in a moment. The way I, I see it is Jean-Claude Van Damme's Bloodsport is the first Mortal Kombat movie. You can do a modern-day reboot of Bloodsport 
but this time make it serious like that last Mortal Kombat that came out. Yeah. See, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I really want Bloodsport done now. How, how old is Jean Claude these days? I would like to see. I would like to see a sequel to Bloodsport when he's somewhere in his upper eighties. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Somewhere. Somewhere in the in the. In Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump area, okay, so with of age, rock, right there, and the then get his guy. Belgian ass out there doing blood sport too. Okay, so in in the in the, I was thinking like Michael Jai White. I was thinking like, don't get Jean Claude Van Damme back. You can have him as like a, as like an old withered veteran or the rich guy no. who runs the thing. But no. I was thinking. I was thinking the guy who played a uh, uh, black dynamite. No, no, I want to see. You want your social security check? You do the fucking splits, bitch. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. I don't know if he can do that now without seriously injuring himself. But his uh, hip would just break off. Yeah, yeah, his hip would just be gone. Uh, I don't know how you would do it now. I don't know how you would do this one out of the 80s, but uh, War Games. War Games? You could do that in modern day. Well, we still have the nuclear weapons, so it's always valid. Okay. Uh, here's one that I think they could absolutely do in the next two to four years. Young Guns. Young guns. Get some like young, uh, attractive actors in their twenties and thirties. I don't. I fucking what's his name? Timothy Chalamet. Uh, 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 Timothy Chalamet. Uh, get him. Get some other uh, young actors. Young guns. You can absolutely do that. I'm surprised we haven't brought that back. So, so we get like Finn Wolfhard in there. Yes. Because frankly, he would work. He would. He absolutely would. Yes. Okay. Uh, now here's a great. Here, here's the uh, the best idea that I came up with. This is a a sincerely good idea. This is a remarkable idea. So you know how they they nowadays over the past couple of years they've been doing this thing on TV where they get modern day actors and comedians and they do live old episodes of TV shows. Where it's like, oh, here's, here's here's all of these famous modern comedians, and they will be performing live an episode of All in the Fam. No. Yeah, they've been doing that on TV, like, uh, and then uh, like uh, the Facts of Life, uh, All in the Family, shows like that. And I was thinking about that on TV, and I was thinking, why can't we do that? But with movies. So here's my pitch, and I think it's a really good one. You get the Sylvester Stallone movie over the top, and I'm not okay. talking about airplaning it. I'm not talking about getting an, a, a pre-existing film and adding humor to it. You do a shot-for-shot, scene-for-scene, line-for-line remake. You psycho it. You Vince Vaughn psycho it. Okay. You do the exact same movie, except Sylvester Stallone's character as the truck driver slash wannabe professional arm wrestler who is trying to win the pro wrestling arm uh, the, the the pro arm wrestling contest while also winning custody of his son. That character is played by Michael Sarah. Okay. But then here's the best part. I, I I'm intrigued. Okay, here's the best part. The young son is played by now modern day Sylvester Stallone. And we don't mention it at all. That Sylvester Stallone is Michael Sarah's son. You get Sylvester Stallone in like the little short pants, you know? Like he goes to a prestigious private school. And then all of the all of the the professional arm wrestlers in the tournament are all like small dudes. Like uh Aziz Ansari. Okay. You know, like the yeah. smallest, nerdiest people that you can find are all of the arm wrestlers. 
Yeah. But still, I, I could go for this. And then that becomes successful, and you redo a bunch of other movies like that. Like you, you make a like a a, a, a shot for shot, scene for scene remake of the first Mission Impossible movie, but with soft puppets. Just off the oh. top of my head. Okay. You, know, you redo entire movies, but just with bizarre casts. I would pay good money to see that over the top, over and over again. I think that's yes. a decent idea. Okay, 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 okay. Fight Club, starring Nathan Lane. Oh, I would pay good money to see that. Nathan Lane and uh, uh, Newman from Seinfeld. I mean, really, I'm just thinking of, like, taking the whole cast of, like, the producers or something like that. Yeah. And dropping them into Fight Club instead. That's a great idea. idea. That is a great, great idea. idea. Like, like some, some action, action film, film, True Lies, but starring Danny DeVito. DeVito. Yes. That sort, sort of thing. thing. But it's, it's not, not an airplane. airplane. It's, it's a percent you do the entire movie, movie just with a different cast. Oh, no, no. I got it. I got it. And now that I got it, I've got to fucking see this movie. Okay. Okay, ready? Yes, absolutely. Brokeback Mountain, Danny DeVito, Joe Pesci. Ew. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. That is a good... That, 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 that idea is tits. That's the tits, funny. Yeah, that, that, that queen. That's such a good idea. <laughs> that is such a good idea. <laughs> Holy uh, shit! I had a I, I had a little pesci in me. <laughs> train spotting, but with overweight people. Just all overweight people. Okay. What's a very what's a very sensitive fried green tomatoes with an all professional wrestling cast? Something like that. You, you get all of the top male wrestlers from AEW, and you have them do Terms of Endearment. Yes. That's what I'm going for. You get, um, you get Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, and you have them do Thelma and Louise. Boom. Right there. No, Brock Lesnar... I, I, I don't think Thelma, I don't think Thelma and Louise would really quite work. I hear what you're going for. No, because Thelma and Louise is already a male action flick starring two women. Please don't cry. With, a, with an adjusted script to make it a, a more feminine type movie. So if you, you, if you take two wrestlers and you put them in Thelma and Louise, you, you just... Putting it back to what it was originally going to be, which probably would have sucked. Okay, um, you get a bunch of professional wrestlers and you put them in uh, the exotic Marigold Hotel. Okay. Get a bunch of foreign actors, put them in uh, the Godfather. Okay. That, that's what I, I'm, I'm trying to think of. Uh, yeah, like the greatest movie, Citizen Kane, and just fill it with uh, like character actors. Trained poodle, like Citizen Kane, all trained poodles. I'd be down with that. No, no, you get Citizen Kane and you redo it with monkeys, like Lancelot, Link, Secret Chimp. Yes. Well, I am down, I am down with I am down with with talking chimps, regardless in any mm -hmm. any shape, form, manner. I don't care. I need more talking chimps in my life. I always have. Yeah. Uh, Bunny. Yes. Bit of news. I got a bit of news here that'll blow your freaking mind. Okay. A, a, a legendary piece of 
lost media has been found. Okay. Some anonymous Reddit user uploaded the 1978 Sesame Street episode where Margaret Hamilton reprised her role as the Wicked Witch of the West. A long-lost Sesame Street episode, which in the world of lost media, this is like the holy grail of lost media, because the, the, the original actress who portrayed the Wicked Witch of the West, Margaret Hamilton, shows up in a, in a 1978 episode of Sesame Street. She's flying over Sesame Street, and she falls off of her broom. Her broom gets in the hand of David, the cool black guy who, who uh, helped run Mr. Cooper's store. And the Wicked Witch shows up on Sesame Street and tries to get the broom. And she's doing her Wicked Witch uh, uh, shtick. Yeah. Ah, please, I will turn you into a basketball. I will turn you into a feather duster. Ah! And she's being all loud and angry and Wicked Witchy. And apparently it was way too scary for one-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds. And so PBS got inundated with numerous complaints of very, very young babies and toddlers crying and freaking out over the Wicked Witch on Sesame Street. So the episode aired once in 1978 and then was pulled and was never aired again and the episode was considered lost. Really? For decades, the only bit of proof of this show's existence was an article in some newspaper, I think the New York Times, hyping uh, the Wicked Witch uh, flies her broom into Sesame Street this weekend. There's an image, this really famous image of uh, Margaret Hamilton in her Wicked Witch outfit standing in front of Oscar the Grouch in his uh, trash can. And it was always a... It, it, it was, was always, always believed, believed that we would just we never see this episode, episode until some random dude yesterday, yesterday morning, morning uploaded it to Reddit. Wow. And my wife and I saw it. It blew our minds. At one point, she threatens to turn Big Bird into a feather duster, and Big Bird gets scared. So in the next scene, Big Bird is seen in front of Cooper's, Cooper's store guarding it. And it's shocking. He's like, I'm ready to get that Wicked Witch. He's got a bat in one hand and a really? stick in the other. Like he's going straight up Casey Jones on someone. He's going to be beating the shit out of the Wicked Witch. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's, a, it, it, it's an amazing bit of lost media that was just randomly found. What's it? What's it? Look like I heard. I heard it in brief passing somewhere. It was posted. I the thing that blew me away was how attractive Maria looked, and I looked it up. She was like twenty six or twenty seven years old when she did this episode, and I, I I was so I'm so used to like forty year old Maria on Sesame Street, like older Maria. I was shocked to see like a young Maria. Maria was kind of hot. She was. Yeah. I was surprised. I only watched Sesame Street like in the eighties growing up, and it was it was surprising to see a younger Maria. Yeah. And I I, I learned a lot about Sesame Street from this episode, and that's going to be the shaft for next week. Steve's historic approximation. We'll be talking a little bit about Sesame Street. I'm really excited about it. But it's out there. It's on Reddit. I posted the link on my Twitter uh, at Reverend Steve. Because I joined Twitter so early that I could just get the name Reverend Steve and not have to put like eight numbers after it. Yeah. So uh, you can go there and find it. it. It's not the entire episode. They cut out all the little cartoons in, in between segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's just like 15 minutes of the live action plot of Margaret Hamilton in Sesame Street. It is, it is a fascinating watch because she is an old woman she was in a 1939 movie and here she is in 1978 and she still got the voice and the actions and the mannerisms she's still kicking ass as the wicked witch so good for actress margaret hamilton yes yes well she was having kind of a kind of a resurgence in the late 70s yeah uh, and she was popping up on a lot 
another thing. I mean, that would be right in the same time period as the uh, Poland Halloween special. Yes, and uh, I this was pointed out by numerous people on Twitter that she disguises herself as an old woman and goes into Mr. Hooper's store to try and get the brew. And uh, they all think at first that she's an old woman and says, oh, welcome. Can I get you anything? Can I get you coffee? And she says, no, I don't drink coffee. And apparently that was hilarious to people in 1978 because apparently Margaret Hamilton was the spokesperson for... I don't know, Folgers? I think it was yeah, Folgers, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. She, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, she was definitely having a resurgence at the time, but it, it, fascinating to see this thing that everyone assumed was lost to time randomly pop up. Because that's the amazing thing about lost media is that it can just pop up uh, just on some random Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Okay. We need to talk about professional wrestling. What has Vince done now? Holy crap. Okay. Wrestling news has been insane over the past couple of weeks. Uh, Roman Reigns has been uh, WWE champion for over a year, a year and a half, like two years. He's had the belt on so much. He's, he's become like... like uh, like, like the, the tribal, tribal chief, chief. Okay. Is what they're calling him. And, and, and so, so he even he unified the belt. belt. So the WWE, the, the Raw championship, championship and the SmackDown Championship, he owns both belts. And once he did that, he renewed his uh, contract. So now he's basically doing a Brock Lesnar and he can show up whenever he wants, which means he's never showing up. And now the WWE belts are sort of disappeared. Uh, they have announced that Brock Lesnar will be appearing at SummerSlam. Okay. And that's the only time we'll see the WWE belts all summer. So Brock Lesnar has become... Uh, is so, so Roman Reigns, the WWE champion, has become Brock Lesnar, which means the WWE championship doesn't mean anything anymore because it's just not around anymore. And if the, the WWE championship isn't around, then what's the point of anyone wrestling anymore? Mm -hmm. What is, are, are, is suddenly the inter the, the, the European, European Championship, Championship going to be the most important belt? It, it's just ridiculous. And then there are still a bunch of random firings happening left and right. They're firing these NXT people. They're firing this and that. I'm still upset at the fact that they fired. Uh, uh, Tim, morning. Oh, okay. So, uh, so then Sasha Banks and Naomi, the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship, walked out. During a raw taping, and so uh, they they shit talked them on air during the show, and now it seems like Sasha Banks, one of their biggest female wrestlers, may have been fired, may not have been fired, who knows? And then about a week, two weeks ago, Stephanie McMahon left the company. Oh, really? Yes, and it was shocking at the time. She said, "Oh, I want to be. Uh, I want to spend more time with my family." And everyone, and it was believed that she wanted to spend more time with her family because uh, Triple H had a heart attack. But he had a heart attack a year ago, so the timing's a bit weird. What's even weirder is that a week ago, after Stephanie McMahon has already left, and articles started appearing in uh, trade magazines about how <laughs> Stephanie McMahon wasn't doing her job well and that she she wasn't she, she was underperforming and it it is generally believed that that story was actually leaked to the press by Vince McMahon and the WWE that like the WWE were shit talk, shit talking Stephanie McMahon and the whole okay. thing and the whole thing seemed really confusing but it makes more sense now that um, it, it, it suddenly CNN and, and, and all the news media are reporting about Vince McMahon because in uh, January, a, it, the story going around is that Vince McMahon had a uh, sexual relationship with an accountant in WWE and 
he paid her a $3 million hush payment and made her sign a non-disclosure agreement where she can't badmouth Vince McMahon or mention the, uh, the sexual encounter that they had. She quit, and uh, the board of executives at WWE learned about this $3 million payment, and now they're investigating it, and the board found out about this a month ago. So Stephanie leaving two weeks ago suddenly makes a lot of sense. She, did, she said, I'm leaving the WWE to spend more time with family, and I will, and she like erased the WWE from her uh, Twitter bio and her like uh, online resume doesn't mention the WWE at all. And so she was trying to distance herself from the scandal. Uh, and it, it, the investigation has uh, uncovered numerous other allegations about Vince McMahon and the head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis, who is an occasional character on WWE. And apparently this woman and the $3 million settlement, when Vince McMahon was done having sex with her, he passed the woman to John Laurinaitis as if she was a toy. Okay. And here's Vince McMahon's defense of his actions. The $3 million were, was my own money. Not company money. I paid that from my own pocket, so I didn't do anything wrong. However, okay. apparently the accountant was being paid $100,000, but once they started having sex, she, got, she started getting paid $200,000. Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis claim, oh, she was just really good at her job and she was given a raise. It has nothing to do with the fact that I pressured her into sex. So then Vince McMahon stepped down from the company and it was announced that Stephanie McMahon is coming back now as an interim CEO while Vince McMahon is being investigated. And everyone said, oh, so Vince McMahon will be uh, stepping down. Uh, WWE is going to be going through some serious changes. Uh, this Friday on SmackDown, he showed up and opened SmackDown. Vince McMahon? Yes. The cheers, cheers from, from the, the audience, audience as, as if he, he hasn't been shown to be an alleged uh, serial uh, sexual abuser, predator. Yeah. We've got five minutes, so whatever you're saying, make it quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It, uh, so, if I did it willingly, I wouldn't willingly admit it happened, because that's Vince McMahon. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, yeah that's, that's gross. gross. He's 76, 76 years, years old. old. Guy's a freaking uh, uh, mummy at this point. Vince McMahon? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was thinking about. Like, like I, it, it would take $3 million to have him come at you with his Randy Quaid crazy period looking penis. It would take $3 million just for him to touch my shoulder. Guys, yeah. Yeah. He's technically still married to his wife, Linda McMahon, but I imagine their relationship is as loving and caring as Donald and Melania Trump. I would imagine so, yes. Yeah, so... And, the w and a lot of people are saying that Vince McMahon showing up to open Raw after he stepped down as CEO amid sexual uh, harassment allegations is just a sign that, oh yeah, he's still going to be in charge. Uh, nothing's going to change. Yeah. This was a power move. It was tone deaf. It was stupid. And according to people backstage at the WWE, it's just in business as usual. So uh, that's all. That's what's happening in the WWE. Suddenly, professional wrestling is big time news and it's uh, crazy. But that's what's happening in the WWE. Fuck Vince McMahon. Oh, he's God, yeah. If he stepped down and now his daughter is in charge, I would love to see her just change him. Yeah, I would love, I would love that, that too, too, but it's it's, it's not going to happen. Vince McMahon is still in charge. It's a puppet dictatorship. Also, I have an appointment tomorrow with a gender confirming therapist, affirming therapist to start me on the process of getting on estrogen. Nice. 
Nice. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, nice. I've been uh, living as a woman for a, 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 about a year now, and so tomorrow I'm going to uh, a, a special clinic in Oklahoma City and talking with a, a specialist to start the process of eventually me starting to get uh, estrogen shots. By the way, the face waxing was awesome. Fuck! <laughs> ah! Ah! I was trying to get her to let me pluck. Oh, so that it was it was basically it, I I felt bad about the live stream because I was worried that people wouldn't find it to be entertaining because near the end there all I was doing was crying, just crying, just straight up fucking trying not to oh to show my tears that much, you know? Yeah. But apparently it's been seen almost like a hundred times and people are really liking it and digging it and it, like. People are commenting on it and tell, telling me quotes from it that I don't remember because it was too traumatizing, but if the jackass has taught us anything. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad that people seem to appreciate my pain. Yes. But I'm glad you liked it. I blamed you for a good portion of it. I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was fun. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. Yeah, she but said people that liked it. Yes, if I wasn't live streaming, I would have given up. Like, like after three or four strips. Well, but the estrogen that should cut down on some of it, doesn't it? Oh yeah. When I'm on the estrogen, I won't shave anymore. As it is right now, I'm shaving like every day. Yeah, that's why we were doing. That's why we were doing the the waxing. Yeah, it was like two weeks where I didn't yeah. have to shave. And it, it, it felt nice to finally not have to shave, but not enough to go through that again. Yeah, so that's it for our vlog. Good stuff. Uh, we will be uh, doing a, one of my favorite segments, Deep Historic Approximations. I've got a short one, a good one about World War II and wood that I'm very excited about and nazis. We're going to be talking about Nazis and passive aggressiveness, and I'm really excited about this one. I, I did a lot of research to make sure that it's true, so uh, we'll be taking a short break, and then after that, we're going to be coming back with Steve's historic approximations, so be sure to stay tuned. We're just going to have a short uh, technical difficulty as we switch.